Hi everyone, my name's Ben Batchelder. Some friends encouraged me to uh, make this video. Uh, I really have no credentials to do so. I'm just a writer who likes to write nonfiction, and so I don't have any degrees that would make me a specialist on the subject. But uh, I'm a patriotic writer, and so I'd like to uh, share some of my thoughts with you that might help to clarify. What's coming up this, this Wednesday, January 6th, uh, first of all, it's not a date in the Constitution, it's a date in an act, uh, and that's the Electoral Count Act of 1887. The main themes uh, on Wednesday will be what, is, what does the Constitution say, specifically the Twelfth Amendment, and what does the Electoral Count Act of 1887 say. Uh, in my view, and I think in most people's view, the Constitution trumps any act. And that act, in fact, has uh, never been adjudicated. That's it's, it, that is, it's never been challenged, it's never been brought before the Supreme Court. So it's an open question whether that act is constitutional or not. So uh, what we all know is that this is the most contested election in U.S. history. Uh, and we know that because the last, the most similar one was in 1876 uh, when uh, Rutherford Hayes was elected uh, after a contested constitutional process. Uh, there were only three states that were contested in that election, and we know that we have uh, six or seven states being contested. Uh, this election. So, uh, what's going to happen, of course, on January 6th is there's going to be a joint session of Congress where the Senate will come over to the House chambers. It's important to remember that the House and Senate members have no specific uh, power during that joint session. They are purely spectators, uh, uh, largely, with, I guess, some exceptions. And who leads is the president of the Senate, who's the current vice president, Mike Pence. So uh, what's likely to happen? We already know, if you've been following the news at all, that now uh, likely over 100 representatives and at least a dozen senators uh, will be contesting the electoral slates from uh, the contested six or seven um, states where dueling electoral slates already exist. So um, what seems to happen is that there is a roll call. Uh, the 12th Amendment really gives all of the plenary power to the president of the Senate uh, to count uh, the electoral votes or the electoral slates, to open them and count them. It's actually, and I don't have the exact uh, uh, wording, but it's, it's in done in the passive voice, it's to be counted, and it seems pretty clear over history that, that uh, the president of the Senate, or the current vice president's power, is quite large. In fact, there was an election in 1800 in which the then vice president, Thomas Jefferson, uh, who was also then the president of the Senate, for this very uh, type of activity, uh, decided to, when there was a dueling slate of electors from one state, he decided to take the, I think it was four votes uh, that were for him and not for his opponent, and by taking those uh, without any uh, ability for any of the senators or representatives present to make any kind of constitutional uh, uh, complaint, he took the the, he did the counting, and uh, by doing it so, he was able to officially and constitutionally make himself the president. And remembering that Thomas Jefferson was a framer of the Constitution, so he probably knew what the Constitution was about uh, and what the intent of the framers was. So I think the, the easiest but not most likely uh, thing on, on uh, Wednesday, January 6th, is for, for the President of the Senate, uh, Mike Pence, to simply declare 
that the, uh, the dueling Elector Slates, in his view, uh, have not been, and I don't, again, know the exact language, I don't recall, but they've not been legally um, uh, made, those electoral slates, and that he will discard them both, uh, and thereby bringing uh, down uh, candidate Biden's uh, total to, I believe, 222, uh, and leaving President Trump's at 235, if I remember the numbers. Now, that, that obviously would, would uh, not be well received by uh, Biden supporters, uh, but would it be constitutional? Uh, it looks like. Remember Thomas Jefferson, and remember that the Electoral Count Act of 1887 has never been adjudicated. So uh, Mike Pence could potentially even say that, in his view, uh, that is an unconstitutional act uh, and that he will go ahead and use his clear constitutional powers. But that seems unlikely. That would be the cleanest, uh, easiest way to go, uh, potentially, even before um, a lot of counting goes on or contesting. But what seems more likely is that the roll call will take place uh, and that when you get, it goes alphabetically, and when you get to Arizona, we now know that there will be, uh, and it has to be done in writing, written uh, contestations from at least one senator and one representative. How that proceeds is, is, will be an interesting question. There's very good historic legal uh, argument that uh, every single elector who's an actual person uh, be contested, and according to the uh, Electoral Count Act of 1887, uh, uh, one, one, every uh, valid contest uh, uh, needs to be debated for two hours by the respective bodies. Or in other words, the Senate retreats to its chambers or house and uh, uh, debates for two hours and, and votes, and then comes back with the result of those votes. Now, it's not quite clear uh, 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 exactly how those votes work uh, and whether or not um, it's a, a simple vote, one senator, uh, one vote, one representative, one vote, or uh, the possibility of what eventually happens according to the 12th Amendment is that in a, in a situation in which the election is contested, the House uh, does not vote by one representative, one vote. It votes by state delegation. One vote per state delegation. Uh, the number seems to be about 28 uh, state delegations are Republican, 21 are Democrat, with a couple of, of them are split. And so uh, it seems highly likely that uh, whatever vote goes towards a, uh, uh, a by delegation vote of the House uh, it clearly will be a uh, Republican win. Uh, there's another wrinkle, and that is uh, in the contested elections, uh, per the, the 12th Amendment, uh, the Senate actually votes for the vice president, and the uh, House, which is voting by the per delegation, is voting for the president. Um, now, uh, the, the question is, is will, would someone like Speaker Pelosi um, accept that uh, in her house as she was just narrowly re-elected the Speaker, or would she claim that uh, that is not necessary and that she gets to vote one representative, one vote? Uh, there's a good argument that even if she does that, uh, let's say that after the two-hour debate on the either one elector or a slate of electors, uh, the respective houses return to the joint session with Mike Pence presiding, and he uh, asks uh, what were the results of those votes, uh, and uh, let's say the Senate um, voted against the Biden uh, slate for the vice president or voted against uh, Harris, or the Harris uh, electors, uh, and over on the House, Pelosi says, well, they they didn't contest, so they voted for the uh, Democrat or the Biden uh, electors from that state, uh, there seems to be the possibility that 
that Kevin McCarthy could say, no, uh, we actually, and, and uh, Mike Pence could ask, um, and, and is that the final word from the House? And, and Kevin McCarthy might say, no, no, sir. Uh, we, we did a vote by per delegation as well, uh, and the results are different. Now, once there's a, con uh, a contested result where the Senate and the House of Representatives differ, on whether or not either that elector or that slate of electors uh, is valid. Um, per the 12th Amendment, it would be quite simple that the President of the Senate uh, uh, decides uh, which, which he deems valid. And that goes back to the, the first path. So the, the, the President of the Senate at that point could say, uh, I believe that the House is correct, I believe that the Senate is correct, or it could say uh, this was clearly a fraudulent election uh, and that the, the electors were not duly certified, uh, correctly certified, and would throw out uh, the both slates for that state. Um, that, is, that is one potential path, uh, and, and, uh, and you go on from there. So uh, what we're looking at is that if, the, um, if it goes down the path of counting per state, and, and here's a proviso that if um, the contestation is against per elector, you're then talking about over 80 electors, two hours of debate each, uh, and this would allow for perhaps a week of debate, uh, which could be well uh, used by, by the Republicans uh, and Trump's legal team uh, in order to prevent the, uh, present the evidence which has been so egregiously denied the American people by the judicial system uh, and even uh, pr principally in the judicial system, but clearly by the legacy media and so on. And so uh, that, that could uh, mean that we go out, in fact, for many days rather than just January 6, uh, and we're, we're in for an interesting ride. Uh, a question comes up, and what about the Ted Cruz uh, proposal that uh, essentially we follow what was done during the last uh, uh, gravely contested uh, election, and that is uh, he's, he's suggesting that he will not, uh, he, will, he will contest uh, unless there is a 10-day emergency audit declared or, or uh, via a special electoral commission, which is what happened back in 1876. Uh, and uh, clearly that's not going to be voted on in the next several days uh, or accepted, uh, but we'll see. I, I think it's a clever uh, maneuver to put um, to put McConnell uh, in a hard place, because right now McConnell uh, seems to be the leader of the Surrender Caucus, along with Senator John Thune, uh, and if they lose most of the, their members uh, to Cruz's uh, what seems like quite a fair, anyone interested in election integrity uh, really couldn't, couldn't be against a 10-day emergency audit in those contested states. Uh, at the end of which the, the results uh, of that audit from the, this election committee are presented to uh, both the Congress and to the state legislatures, and the state legislatures are then asked to reevaluate whether they believe they certified correctly or incorrectly, and thereby decertify and certify correctly afterwards. So uh, that seems like a pretty fair uh, way to resolve, which is by which is not only the most contested election in U.S. history, even by polling, uh, you show nearly 20 percent of Democrats believe that it was a rigged election, over a third of independents do, and well over two thirds of Republicans do. So uh, really grave, grave damage will be done to the Republic uh, if. Uh, election integrity is swept under the rug because uh, a lot of people seem to want a certain end and don't care about the means of getting there. Um, and I will just add that uh, some people who 
are uh, whining that the, what's going to happen on Wednesday is seditious and horrible and uh, whatnot are really quite ahistorical. The uh, last three Republicans who were, were uh, through the constitutional uh, process elected, certified, and the, the counts uh, counted and certified, and then officially became president-elect and then inaugurated on the 20th, uh, the Democrats, in fact, um, contested all of the last three Republican presidents. So this is far from unprecedented. Uh, and so let's hope and pray that, that the, the process on Wednesday um, is a fair uh, and a constitutional one. I personally believe that Vice President uh, Pence, acting in, with his plenary powers as the President of the Senate, has a lot of leeway. Um, he already represents two of the three branches that it, he, he, he'll be representing in that position as a um, uh, as the pres as a, uh, he'll be representing the executive branch and he'll be exec, uh, representing the entire congressional or legislative branch. And one could quite arguably say, given that the Supreme Court decided to completely renege uh, its, its uh, constitutional duty and make any, even view any evidence uh, so far in this most uh, uh, contested election in history, uh, means that they're, they've checked themselves out. And so for the president of the Senate to say, in his view, the um, Electoral Count Act of 1887 uh, or specific clauses of it are clearly unconstitutional is certainly uh, within his powers at that time. Uh, and the results of, of whatever path uh, Mike Pence takes on Wednesday, um, presumably, uh, 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 some people could complain and, and take it through the judicial system, and we'll see if the Supreme Court is consistent and decides not to, uh, no one has standing, and that the process that was constitutionally affected on Wednesday should be turned over by them. Perhaps not, as they've stayed uh, well away from this process so far. So let the electoral process, let the constitutional process play out uh, I hope and pray, and, and I trust a, a lot of you do as well, that a, a lot more politicians have the courage to uh, do the right thing. We know there's a lot of intimidation going on out there. Um, there's immense violence and threatening and, and cancel woke culture against any conservative who, who uh, tries to do the right thing, frankly. So let's hope and pray that it's a, a fair process on Wednesday, uh, and uh, may the best man win. Thanks for watching. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll take them. I don't think we have a lot of people watching, so uh, I, do, I did receive some nice messages. I appreciate it. But with that, we'll end, and so God bless America, and God bless us all.